Okay. So we have ourselves the uh, YouTube chat that's up and running. Hello, oh. Andrew English from London. Um, do jump in if you uh, if you're watching, and of course, do spread the word. I think I will uh, do a little bit of a tweet now and just say to everyone, "Oi, we're live! <laughs> Join us! <laughs> Join us, please! Come in! Welcome to another <laughs> session of live TV, so to speak, or <laughs> so you get to see what kind of." Uh, <laughs> Problems we get ourselves into and out of this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's going to be that kind of a a show, folks. <laughs> Aaron, um, although balancing Aaron has done, Aaron has done a lot of legwork on uh, for for us at, at Long Beach Con. So, yeah, well, it seems that way with mm. uh, the people that he's talking about bringing on, and so. We shall. Um, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Yes. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it's all worth. Um, why is it a three-day weekend in the states? Labor Day. Ah. Yes, one of those hangovers from the um, the nineteen hundreds, nineteen twenties labor union movement that uh, people were given a holiday at the end of the summer to celebrate, to take the day off and celebrate. And I, I believe that's a large part of the holiday. So You'll be giving them raises now. Yeah, raises would be good. <laughs> that's happening slowly. That's happening. You know, it, it seems like it's happening. At least it is in my area. The the wages are going up. So, which is always a nice thing. Gives people more money to spend at conventions. Woohoo! Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, you may want to spread the word that we're live, uh, everybody, because we have got ourselves, if Aaron, or Aaron, I, I I always say Aaron, and I get punched in the arm by Caroline, because Caroline says it's Aaron. But anyway, um, has, like uh, Alyssa says, has done a lot of their work. We have got some pretty impressive guests coming up today, if that's the case. Okay. Um, he's going to be wandering around Long Beach Comic Con, and uh, yeah, we've got ourselves a fair few people that um, I think you're going to enjoy watching us talk to. So there we go. Um, Dan Berry's here. Um, Andrew English, hope I'm not writing in crayons. No, I am not writing in crayons like the producers of The Inhumans have. Um, but we'll get into that later on because we will do a little bit of a, a review of, uh, of the Inhumans. Uh, Dan Berry is sitting at a table with the Hall H guys at the moment. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. Yes. Hope he's not supplying them with Wi-Fi, because, you know, there could, be, <laughs> there, could be, there could be a coffee run required, and next thing you know. <laughs> no, I, I, listen, Dan, can I say to everybody right now, Dan has been doing some posts on an Englishman in San Diego. When I say some, I mean pretty much 90% of them. He's been absolutely typing his backside off, uh, especially when it comes to the gaming stuff, especially for like Gaming Con and uh, all sorts of uh, uh, stuff that's been announced this week. So I want to say at this point, thank you very much indeed to Dan because he's done a cracking job this week. I'd also like to thank everybody as well for uh, sending uh, best wishes after me not feeling spectacularly well last week. And I'd also like to say thank you very much indeed to everybody who's responded to my post that I put up, the uh, um, Comic-Con What You Can Do Now post, the long epic read, which is that, uh, the logo post. Thank you very much indeed to everyone who responded to that, including those people who turned around and said, can we be honorary Brits now? If that's the case, if we can get those T-shirts, because I can appreciate that. We had some some very nice logos, and um, also the Weekend Con as well, which we'll get into as well, which we posted. So listen to everybody who has commented and responded to posts on an Englishman in San Diego. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Okay, so four, three, two, one. 
graphics and stuff. Graham Small really enjoyed the logo post. I really wasn't sure if I had overdone it on that one and just typed way too much. Uh, but uh, I, I thought it was worth getting into the whole story of the logos for the, English, for the UK attendees group. And uh, there's some really good stuff. I, re I really enjoyed it. Um, Andrew English has forgotten to email the London Super Comic Con report. Listen, if you can get something in, that'd be great. At least then we can get something up and uh, we can go from there. But uh, yeah. do spread the word because we are now live. Welcome to Talking Comic Con, a cup of tea with an Englishman in San Diego. No cup of tea for me because I've been running around like a blue ass fly, so I'm on the pints of water today, mm. which were oh, required. No, no, no. Um, I've been working. It's been it's been hard work. So uh, it's been a, more a case of just running around, very, very, very busy. Uh, how? Yes. Well, let's uh, introduce my uh, my partner in crime. Alyssa Franks is joining us from the Friends of Comic Con Forum. How are you, Alyssa? I'm well. Uh, it's uh, we're pulling into the end of uh, the summer, and I live in a tourist area. So what with Labor Day weekend, we traditionally see. Uh, an exodus of all of the summer traffic jams and all of that sort of stuff. Huge, huge kind of buying season um, is going on right now. What with all of the the stores are having sales, and which segues beautifully into a lot of people have been really interested in Force Friday. <laughs> well, yes, indeed. Um, I attended my foot. Well, here in the UK, obviously, uh, being in the UK, we are a little bit more subdued. Uh, so uh, while we did have Force Friday, it was a little bit quieter. Um, the uh, certainly the places that did midnight uh, openings, we had, uh, I think, the Disney Store in London. We had a couple of uh, Toys R Us stores and also a uh, a toy chain over here or a store chain called. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Why can't I remember its name? It just completely vanished out of my head. Um, yeah, either way, it was. I'll, I'll remember it and come back to it. Um, but uh, basically, it was uh, very subdued. Um, I, I mean, for example, the store that I went to, they were trying to entice people in um, by having uh, this uh, the uh, a gift bag and also a free Pop Funko for the first 50 people to walk through the door, which is nice um except i think there was around 50 55 people total uh so it was uh, the whole thing was supposed to be bef between midnight and one o'clock it was all pretty much done and dusted uh within uh sort of like 15 20 minutes as everybody dived towards the black series figures and the three and three quarter inch figures and grabbed them by the arm and then left nothing for everybody else um but no it was, it was okay it was, i mean the the atmosphere was um it was quietly cynical, as is the Brits, uh, <laughs> which is kind of we'll, we'll take it to, at face value. Um, but it was it was it was it was okay. I mean, I, I've been reading um, about uh, the American uh, Force Friday, and that you certainly kind of went a little bit further out. Um, did you get uh, manage to go out and uh, catch anything this weekend? Um, I did not. There was nothing really that I wanted. Um, I, I, I will admit there was a, a flocked, uh, a flocked um, Chewy, I think. Is that it? Yep. Yeah, that I was almost tempted, you know, just because, you know, Chewy. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not to collect, it's not to collect a series. It's not to complete a collection. It's more of just, oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Um, I so, uh, but uh, I know very quickly it was Smith's Toys, just to correct myself. So there you go. Yes, thank you very much indeed. Okay. For, uh, <laughs> yes, it, I, I've been very distracted this week. It's been one of those where I've, it's felt like an eternity since I've done this, and it felt like an eternity since we did last week as well. So uh, <laughs> no, it was fun. No, uh, it was it was rather weird at uh, at um, Smith's when it came to uh, the Funkos because. Obviously, the, that particular day, I mean, Force Friday has been weird this time around anyway, because um, we kind of got the announcements of what was going to be on the shelves really, really late. Uh, last year and the year before, it, we kind of got a good couple of weeks lead up as to what Lego were going to be bring, bringing out and Hasbro and all the other distributors. Uh, this year, it was in the last couple of days. We kind of got them the info, info really late. Um, the... For two Funkos that were on the shelf at Smith's were the flopped Chewbacca, 
and the Praetorian Guard exclusive. So we're talking two exclusives, which was weird to have them in the UK, but then also to only have five or six of each. Uh, it, 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 you see what I mean? It, the, the whole thing seems backward this year. So, so I don't know. I mean, I think maybe they, everyone's just feeling Star Wars is just going to promote itself. They don't really need Force Friday when it comes to the big legacy films. Okay, Rogue One may need a little bit more of a push, but the big ones, I think everyone's going to go and see them anyway. So, no, it was good. Um, the item that I was particularly interested in was the um, that massive uh, Lego that what is it seven or eight thousand pieces 17 000, i don't know some uh, yes um well I, I don't know if that was a force friday thing uh because i don't think oh. that's out yet it's the new millennium falcon yeah it's the yeah. it's huge <laughs> it's absolutely huge. that that um, i would have gone yeah. for <laughs> if, <laughs> if that would have been in anywhere my my uh if my wallet could even remotely follow that <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, I've always turned around and said that the two um, Legos that I would like to buy are the not this one, the 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 Millennium Falcon two issues back, which was slightly bigger. It's this huge Millennium Falcon, and also the super super death uh, super Star Destroyer, the sort of like eight foot long thing. But then, of course, you'd need a house to buy it, which is weird uh, <laughs> to to actually. Uh, uh, afford it but uh, very very cool uh, yeah we've got um, uh, Sarita P uh, who's watching hello Sarita and the Millennium Falcon comes out on the 1st of October uh, one th uh, 7,541 pieces ouch that's that's um, yeah I don't think that's a uh, 6 to 15 year old <laughs> item I think that's going to be one of the bigger ones uh, yeah. so there we go excellent that's definitely a dad, a dad and, and kid <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Excellent stuff. Right, so uh, just to quickly um, say it's the um, the 3rd of September 2017, which means we are talking 45 weeks away from San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, I think I've actually even got a, de um, a, uh, a date countdown as well on my uh, phone, which uh, I kind of <laughs> keep to hand 320 days uh, to uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Obviously, loads of events that are taking place between now and then. Next week, we've got uh, ICE in Birmingham, which I'm going to be bringing a report from. Hopefully, I'm going to be uh, interviewing John Tyler Christopher next week. And, of course, you've got plenty of uh, events that are taking place this week. You've got Dragon Con, San Francisco Comic Con. You've got Comic Con Amsterdam that's taking place, uh, which is organized, uh, I believe, by the MCM group. Uh, MCOM in Leicester that's taking place this weekend. Stars of Time Film and Comic Con in Western Supermare, which I didn't even know Western Supermare had a Comic Con. You see, they're just cropping up in all sorts of little places. Uh, but one of the big events, obviously, which uh, if you spot follow your social media, you know, Long Beach Comic Con uh, has been running this weekend. Um, and uh, it's basically a, a massive event, which uh, I know that we've got um, Aaron Nabus. Uh, joining us from and also I think Dan Berry is going to be uh, uh, on camera as well and hopefully some special guests as soon as we've got uh, Aaron on uh, we'll uh, dive in with that is that what you're typing there Alyssa yep yeah you're dealing you're dealing with that okay uh, well in that case do you want me to uh, cover um, the PayPal uh, um, sure. headline oh, while okay. you're while you're talking Yes, go right ahead. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll dive in with that. This is something that is um, relating to the end of the month uh, because, of course, uh, we have heard word that we will be having a uh, the pre-registration or the returning registration badge sale taking place in the fall of this year. So that could be anything from the end of September all the way through to the beginning of December. Um, people are kind of hoping it's going to be sooner rather than later. But off the back of that, um, Alyssa and several forum members have been hearing about uh, a crackdown by PayPal, which uh, is uh, rather relevant to our interests. Uh, apparently, they are cracking down on friends and family transfers, which is, as far as I'm uh, in my mind, a big part of the appeal of using PayPal, the ability to uh, send money to a mate and just kind of uh, pay back a debt or just anything that you need to do in terms of a quick um, something on an app where you can just send money to and fro uh, using PayPal. Well, as it happens, it sounds like PayPal. Oh, hello. Joining us. 
<laughs> we'll quickly wrap this up then. Uh, so um, PayPal is cracking down on friends and family transfers right now. A bunch of people in a group on the forum uh, are banned from all transactions or via PayPal because they had four or five friends and family transactions that were deemed to be purchases. Now, I know that we're all supposed to be using gift and services anyway, but personally, I think if you are part of a badge team, you are interacting with your friends. So it actually does, for me, count. Go on, I, I just want to add one thing. Um, the forum that they are speaking of, that person that quote was speaking of, is um, uh, on a poster trading. Ready, ready, ready the video bomb? <laughs> forum. <laughs> Hi, Aaron. <laughs> um, so that's not on the the, the friends of CC. Oh, right. Form. Okay. Sorry, I so, thought it was a friends of Comic Con. So, okay. and so there is. Um, it's more of a transactional. Uh, you know, getting a hard, a hard item, but tickets could also be seen by PayPal as being a hard item too. So wow, it, there I, is. I, that, so there I is. Just, that I just don't see it. <laughs> Yeah. Fingers well, crossed. They don't look at us. Absolutely. I mean, um, I've I use friends and family a lot when it comes to badge teams. So, fingers yeah. crossed. I mean, hopefully, uh, uh, PayPal are a little bit more lenient. Uh, certainly, uh, in the next month or so. So, uh, as you hear uh, a bit of audience noise in the background, we have ourselves uh, Aaron Neighbors joining us. Hello, there, Aaron. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> How's everybody doing? Not too bad at all. Uh, you <laughs> are in Long Beach, and uh, you're at Long Beach Comic Con. How, so, um, yeah, I mean, we might as well dive straight into it and uh, ask how it's been. How's your weekend gone? It's gone pretty well. It's been productive. Uh, we've been to a few panels yesterday. Um, we, uh, you know, went through the, the, sh the, the show floor, talked to a bunch of artists, as usual. Um, and, you know, busy trying to see what kind of guests we can drum up for, for today's show. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, we, we have a this, is, this is where I'm incredibly grateful, if anything, because if you know uh, Aaron's work, you know him from the Hall Hate Show, which is a great podcast, which is where he gets uh, some fantastic talent on his own show. Let, let, he, me, let me just introduce uh, Paul really quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> Paul, Paul's our, Paul's our handle, and he, and he handles uh, what, marketing and everything. Uh, press and pros. Yeah, press and pros, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's going to take us to Martha right now. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, okay. Martha, uh, just to explain to everybody, Martha is uh, Martha Donato, who's the president of MAD Event Management, but the people behind Long Beach Comic Con. So, uh, no, this should be an interesting conversation. Uh, you may want to just back your microphone away from your mouth just a little bit, uh, Aaron. There you go, just a little bit. All right. How's that sound? That's better. Fantastic. <laughs> You see, we were just going to text you backwards and forwards, and we thought, yeah, we could. <laughs> we'll just tell you. So that's cool. So, no, um, let's talk about the actual convention itself. I mean, uh, how, is this your first time at Long Beach? Um, no, this is my maybe second or third time. Okay. And how was it compared uh, to last year? Because certainly I think a lot of people are trying to work out where we are in terms of the Comic-Con bubble at this point and, uh, <laughs> and uh, where uh, the, certainly the smaller conventions are dealing with it. Hello. Um, you can save that uh, question for Martha. Hello, Martha. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I wanna, I'm going to switch uh, headsets uh, yeah, to you sure. in, a, in a bit. So we have Martha with us. Uh, we have a, we're in a room where we're sort of overlooking the uh, show floor right now. So I'm going to transfer the headset to Martha, and we'll get the uh, interview started. OK? <laughs> Just a, a little background on Martha. She's the president of um, She's the president of Mad Ed Event Management, and she manages Long Beach Comic Con. Hello there, Martha. How are you? Hi. Good, good morning. Good. Thanks. How are you? Fine, thank you. I I don't know if you can see us because I think um, at this point the camera is being pointed. Um, so this this is going to be one of those disembodied kind of interviews. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Split. You know, he's got a shirt on that says "Punch Out," so you know I'm all I'm looking at his shirt. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, in that case, what you can do is you can look at um, Aaron and hear my voice, mm -hmm. and you can just kind of you can picture the more attractive him with my voice. So there you go. Sounds like a way. plan. Very good. Excellent stuff. Excellent. So I mean, we uh, we kind of got into it with Aaron there just for a second about how the weekend's gone. I mean, uh, how how has been Long Beach for you this weekend? Yeah, so it's been great this weekend. Uh, this is the biggest show we ever produced. Um, we have more exhibit space, we have more guests um, and attendance for, especially on a holiday weekend when the 
temperature has risen here in Southern California to the 100 degree mark has been really great. Very happy with how the show is turning out. Um, happy with the response from the audience. Um, really, I'm going to say it couldn't have gone better. Because, I mean, certainly the one thing that we've been talking about here on this show is about how um, the convention scene is at the moment, certainly in terms of mm -hmm. uh, where, because um, everyone just talks about the Comic-Con bubble, as it were, and about how things can develop yes. and how, how the conventions can evolve and adapt from here on in. I mean, w what's Long Beach uh, been doing in terms of uh, maintaining um, interest in the conventions? I mean, because obviously there's loads of events that you do. Yeah, there are loads of events and there is something of a bubble happening. I totally agree with that thought process. So what we've been doing for the last several years is adding in elements that we feel are additive that don't detract from our core mission here, which is to serve the creator community in comics, animation, um, anime. So what we've done is we've added a Space Expo Pavilion, which we do in partnership with Columbia Mor Memorial Space Station, which is here in Downey, California. And in that booth, they have Northrop Grumman, they have uh, Mead Telescopes, they have JPL, they have Virgin Orbit. And they're all doing really interesting things that are related to science fiction. So the connection between real science and, um, and educational science and the intersection with science fiction and that is such an integral part of everything we do here. We had William Shatner as a guest this weekend. So we put the Virgin Orbit people together with William Shatner and it's like, you know, you know they're, they get it, right? So um, a lot of fun in that sense. And it also then appeals to our other mission, which is to make sure that we're creating an environment here that's always friendly for children. So we have a Kids 10 and Under our free program. We've been doing that for from the beginning. So this is our ninth show. So we have kids come in and then we want them to have really good things to do. So that Space Expo Pavilion has been a really nice branch extension for us into other areas that still feel very core to our mission. And then we've also added, um, we have what we call Cosplay Corner, right? So cosplay is a very important element in any Comic-Con show. But what we had done is set up an area for them where they can set exhibitor booths and they can interact with fans in a more formal way because as you probably know cosplay is a pretty informal thing at most events there's a lot of ghosting and people who are in costume and it's more of an ad hoc thing in a community so we've we've given them a more formal area to gather and be together and that's been really nice too and very well received by the community we'll continue to to try uh last night we tried something called burger con uh burger records is a local <laughs> southern california indie music label it was a lot of fun right and that's just the kind of thing where you know you you like music you like comics it just gives you something else to do another reason to come out for the weekend be it with your friends with your family just to give you something else to do another reason to come to long beach comic con it sounds like you're, you're taking the convention experience and just ramping it up in, in certainly in certain uh, corners. I mean, I, I've seen pictures yeah. of the certainly the space uh, space section, which looks looked fascinating to me. It just looks incredible yeah. what you've done with that. Uh, what's yeah, been thank so, you. What's been the would you say that the highlights of the weekend from a, a guest perspective? Because uh, obviously William Shatner is going to be a massive draw. Um, I was yes. also particularly thrilled to see Dave Gibbons on the uh, the oh yeah 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 <laughs> on the, uh, mm -hmm. the as well. Uh, what I mean, so, from, tell you what, let's go from a personal perspective. What's been your highlights this year? Mm -hmm. Well, William Shatner, for sure, you know, um, <laughs> at the risk of being redundant, you know, that that we've been trying to have him come to the show for a long time. So the the plans aligned for us and we were able to get him here. And, you know, everyone who got to experience that with him yesterday was over the top. So happy about it, including me. I have a picture with him. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing this for a long time and I could count on one hand how many times I've actually asked a celebrity to take a picture. So if that says anything to you. It had, um, to be, it had to be Shatner, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Dave Gibbons, yeah, that's a, that was a, a great thing that we did through the HERE Initiative. So Jim McLaughlin, the executive director of the HERE Initiative, is a longtime friend of mine. And uh, when he called probably a long time, maybe a year ago almost, and said Dave Gibbons would like to come to Long Beach, I was like, let's do it right now. So um, 
that was a great addition. Um, you know, we already mentioned Space Expo. The Artist Alley is, you know, this is one of the biggest Artist Alley in California. And all the people who support that for all these years were so appreciative of. And we added one other small element. We're testing it out. We're calling it Maker's Market, which is, so uh, we started to see in Artist Alley, there are um, really creative people who are developing their own things, like, you know, their own um, jewelry, things like that. So we set up a little area for them and we're testing that out too, to see if that has any interest for the attendees and uh, so we'll see how that goes oh, so because sometimes when you see uh, stalls like that at uh, conventions they're kind of like filtered in with the rest of the con as it were yeah but you're actually kind that's of right. shining, shining a spotlight on that i think that's, that's fantastic yeah exactly and i think that also lends to uh, to the purity of the artist alley when you do when the artists and the creators who are core to what you're doing are together and then anything that's ancillary and no, none, nonetheless important, really, you know, and all still part of the creative process that's so important to all of us as cosplay is, you know, cosplay is a very creative endeavor. Um, but we're separating them out, as it were, and not just blending them all together. And that's an experiment. So far, so good. I'll let you know next year, uh, <laughs> anecdotally, how that, how that was received. <laughs> well, please do. Uh, well, I mean, before next year, I'd love to uh, get a, a post-con kind of a breakdown and certainly see how yeah. the, the the ideas have uh, developed. It was certainly the one thing that I haven't, because um, I have done some research into Long Beach, but I haven't found, um, if you could just talk about the, um, the companies that have come to um, Long Beach, especially when it comes to the comics uh, end of it. Uh, what, what's been mm -hmm. the response um, and who's come to Long Beach in terms of say the the large com the publishers and even the the small press as well. Yeah, so um, Aspen Comics and Top Cow Entertainment are our two. We're so grateful for their ongoing support. They've neither one of those companies has ever missed a Long Beach event. Um, they're longtime friends and colleagues of mine personally and professionally. Um, now, taking that out and getting additional publisher support. Uh, this was Labor Day weekend, and we had a lot of competition, right? It was Fan Expo in Toronto. It was Dragon Con in Atlanta. There's a, a show in San Francisco this weekend. So Labor Day weekend's not our normal weekend, right? We've never done this before. Uh, we got pushed around a little bit in the convention center, um, but next year we'll be back on a non-holiday date in September, and we're already working on getting publishers to come in and support us for that one. But this was a tough weekend to get a, a lot of support, um, and that's okay. You know, we knew that going in. Well, I mean, I know this is the kind of question that Alyssa would jump in on. Uh, just to explain, we've, there is actually somebody else. There's another disembodied head as well uh, on screen. Which is, <laughs> Hi which there. Is, <laughs> which is Alyssa, Alyssa from the Friends of Comic-Con Forum. And this is the kind of question that she would usually ask. Uh, what's been the kind of footfall numbers uh, this weekend? And also, how's that mm -hmm. been in terms of what you were expecting through the door? Yeah, so I didn't know what to expect, being that this was the first time we're on Labor Day weekend. And the foot traffic's very solid. Um, I, I think if you were here, I wish you were here with us, we could walk you down there and show you, but very solid traffic. It was a slow start yesterday morning. It's very hot here, I'll say that again. Uh, <laughs> slow start, but then it really picked up and it was very robust throughout the afternoon, so I was very pleased about that. It's very early here on Sunday morning, so I don't know what today will bring, but tomorrow's a holiday, so, you know, Maybe Sunday will be better than normal, and that's what I'm going to stick with. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is a good answer. I mean, certainly with um, the convention, <laughs> the conventions this year, and certainly for the last three, four years, the Sunday, I mean, you, you talk about them as the, being the, the quiet day, as it were, and it just isn't, yeah. it isn't, that isn't the quiet day. It's just it's as packed as everything else. It's just a, yeah. a, a, full, yeah. on, a full effect. Um, Alyssa, I don't know if you have any questions that you want to jump in on. I just wanted to, um, are, can you give us any preview about what's happening with New, Jer New Jersey Comic Expo? I know you guys manage that yeah. also. Um, I, that's more yeah, in my yeah, sure. In uh, New Haven. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, that's Alyssa's neck of the woods. <laughs> it is. Well, that's my neck of the woods, too. That's why I do it there. I live in New York. Uh-huh. <laughs> and where are you, Alyssa? I'm, I'm in New Hampshire. I was just wondering. Um, okay. I, do you have any uh, b big talent for that? Are tickets still on sale? I haven't done any uh, research mm -hmm. on that yet. 
Yeah, um, yeah. Thank you for asking that. That that shows new for me. So it's still trying to find its home there. But uh, yeah, tickets are on sale now. We are working on some very big guest announcements. You know, New York has a wealth of really great crea- comic creators. So we've been working on getting a bunch of them there. And we we didn't start our announcement rollout yet because of this show. Uh, we'll start doing that next week. And um, that show has the potential to be a um, a really strong Northeast show. You know, we have New York Comic Con. I don't know if either of you have been to that, but that's turned into the equivalent of San Diego Comic Con on the East Coast. But that means in that sense, it's sold out, right? You can't buy a ticket unless you're there the day the tickets go on sale. So we can serve as a little bit of overflow. There shows in October. We're just a few weeks later. So in that sense, I think that that show is going to do well for us in the long run. It's, I like the placement of it being towards the um, end yeah. of November. You're really kind of capturing that uh, holiday, pre-holiday, oh, let's get together with friends and, you know, do a, do a weekend yeah. and go to, um, go to the convention. Yeah, so, we, 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 we can't, yeah, I agree. We're kind of getting that. Well, we've had that here in the the UK just in the last couple of weeks where there's been a large concentration of events all in the case of like a, a couple of weeks and it's, yeah, it yeah. really becomes very apparent that people do end up being they pick and choose and it really has, yeah. it really has hurt numbers to some degree here in the uk uh, i can imagine in the us it's a very similar situation that uh, it's a case yeah. of you you have to put on a strong event and it's great to see uh, long beach stepping up and uh, doing these things which are different and um bec- uh, putting a, a different spin on the whole convention experience i think that's fantastic yeah thank you you know i just I, I, one more quick thing i want to throw in and then i hear my phone dinging over there um <laughs> We produced, uh, starting in February, something called the Comic Creator Conference. We did it in February on the Friday before Long Beach Comic Expo, and we just did it again this Friday. And we had uh, Gene Ha and Dean Haspiel and um, uh, Jeff Gerber from uh, Lion Forge Comics. We had a really nice lineup of speakers who are, you know, very far along in their career in comics, you know, 20 plus years. And they came in and they gave a lot of really, really good advice to the up and coming uh, talent or people who just, they're maybe at their midway in their career and they need to to take it to the next level. So we did five sessions of, uh, of content on Friday, specifically geared for helping creators in the business side of being in this business. So I'm really proud of that too. And I'm, I'm excited about that. And I'd love to keep you guys posted on how that develops. That would be fantastic. Yes, please. I would love to find out uh, how that works out. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, well, listen, thank you. Awesome. I, kn- I know how busy it is. So uh, we'll uh, let you crack on with the rest of your day. Listen, thank, thank you. you so much indeed for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Martha. Although we have had uh, one or two people asking on the Q&A on YouTube, do you have a son called Clark or Bruce by any chance? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no sons, three daughters. There Sorry. You, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The the whole we couldn't do we couldn't do that line. But there we go. Never mind. Martha, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate. Thank it. you so much. Yes, Brilliant. I do appreciate you taking the time with me this morning. Have a good day. Have yourself Bye-bye. a rest of a great come. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. So there you go. That was Martha Donato, who's the president of Mad Event Management. Thank you so much indeed for Martha for taking her time to talk to us. And thanks to Aaron for uh, setting that up and uh, indeed uh, having a little bit of a a, a fun slab there. So um, let's um, uh, crack on. Uh, Well, uh, I think uh, Aaron has just put his headphones back on. I'm guessing you're now going to wander back down to uh, the floor, Aaron. Yes, sir. Yep. Right, we are heading down to the show floor. Brilliant, because I know you've got a, a few other people that you were going to kind of line up with us, so that'd be great. Excellent stuff. Uh, so that's um, uh, Martha. Um, don't forget, you can find out more about um, the uh, the company that uh, puts on uh, Long Beach Comic Con, uh, Comic Expo. Sorry, sorry, and of course, you can find out more about uh, New Jersey Comic Expo as well by ha- going to madeeventmanagement.com. Uh, so do check that out. Uh, I, I'm very excited to find out more about the Comic Creators Conference. That was interesting, wasn't it, Alyssa? Uh, that was fascinating. I, I really appreciated her coming on. Um, I'm trying to get the link up there for folks with, you know, 
Uh, that seems like it's a web address. <laughs> this is the bane of my existence. Um, no, but it was fascinating. And I appreciated her talking about uh, expanding into the Northeast, too. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very interesting to see what, what they do with the New Jersey Comic Expo. That's on the 19th, which is just before Thanksgiving here. Um, yeah. But I love expanding the season out to into early, you know, March, April, and going as late as we can. Cool. That's, that's uh, cool. I, do know, I do know that we've got Michael P. who's watching from Fan Expo in Canada. Um, oh, oh, nice. Hello there, Michael. Um, Jumping on the um, YouTube chat, let us know how it's going. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be fascinated to find out how uh, their, that show's going on. Right, so that was, that was good stuff. Um, so, yes. Um, where, where are we headed next, uh, Aaron? <laughs> oh, we're just waiting for, uh, Alex wanted, Alex wanted to take some pictures of the, from that viewpoint. So oh, but Paul's no, going to take us downstairs. No, absolutely. <laughs> no, I was actually hoping that we could get a viewpoint of how busy the Oh floor yeah. Is now. That, that would have been a fun thing because we saw some pictures from, yeah, um, oh no, that was Fan Expo. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm getting all of my conventions mixed up because the thing there's so many. Yeah. I mean, Amazing from Dragonfly too. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Martha mentioned an event which I forgot was actually happening this weekend. There's another one in there as well, which kind of San Francisco Con. No, yeah, no, no, there was another one. Dragonfly <laughs> and um, <laughs> Long Fanex. Beach Con. Fanex. Yes, Fanex. Oh, man. <laughs> you see, they just, they just, it's. You see, to get an, enough people through the door at this event, that is, it's a tough thing. Because, like they say, it's Labor Day weekend, it's very, very hot, um, there's all these events, it's it's something else, it's, uh, yeah. Right, so I, I know that uh, Aaron's going to head off to uh, try and catch up with another guest now, uh, so we'll just uh, take a bit of time uh, to... Uh, Talk about some uh, the week in con. Uh, we've got ourselves a number of things that have been announced uh, this week. Uh, just to let you know, um, as uh, we did announce um, last week about um, Gail Simone, who cancelled at uh, Dragon mm -hmm. Con this weekend. Uh, just to let you know, uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, yeah, this is Gail's mother in law, who's not being uh, particularly well. She's undergoing cancer treatment mm -hmm. for cancer at the moment. And as far as I'm aware, okay. Let me just uh, mute uh, Aaron there for a second. Um, as far as I'm aware, um, she is uh, recovering a little bit and uh, is doing uh, slightly better than she was earlier on this week. But uh, we'd like to pass on our uh, uh, best wishes to uh, Gail Simone. Um, we also have a cancellation. Um, let's have a look at this, uh, which also was at uh, Dragon Con with Carl Urban. Uh, but uh, apparently uh, Arthur Darville stepped into the plate on that one, so that was rather uh, rather cool. We do have some uh, guest announcements of new events uh, or events that are going to be coming up. Uh, Beach City Con is going to be welcoming Mark Ashiro, who's uh, a, a Steven Universe writer. Uh, this is on the 13th and 15th of October, uh, taking place at Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, so uh, that's Mark Ashiro, who is confirmed for uh, Beach City Con. You also have guest editions of the Walking Dead cast of uh, Michael Rooker, John Bernthal, and Ross Merquand, uh, who's going to be appearing at Salt Lake Comic Con. Uh, that's on the 23rd, 21st to the 23rd of September at Salt Place Convention Center. All the information, of course, can be found there. Oh, and Michael P's joined us from uh, his convention. Okay. <laughs> In Toronto. And okay. In well, say so what we'll, we'll oh, come no. back to. We'll come back to a week in convention. <laughs> we'll say hi to Michael P. Hello, Michael. How are you? Hello. Can you guys hear me? We can indeed. Uh, how's Good. your weekend? How's your weekend gone uh, north of the border? <laughs> Superbly. Somebody. Uh, uh, somebody had a chance to go to the set of the Expanse on Thursday. So this has been the best trip ever. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold this finger up. No reason why. Just bear with me. So um uh yeah. So okay, you went to see the uh, set of a certain television show. How, I mean, I saw pictures. How how was that? Um. Oh, I don't know. Uh, a couple of degrees past amazing, past fantastic, past incredible, past. You know, it's the ultimate fanboy. And I have to admit, I was. You should be very proud of me. I did not squeal. I did not faint. I did not fall over and, and you know, stupefied and, and just had drool, drool uh, flowing out of my mouth. 
as I was there. I actually talked to them in an intelligent fashion. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, as long as you behaved yourself and you didn't get inappropriate, that's fine. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So you, you went to the uh, Expanse set, um, and then you've been to Fan Expo in Canada. How's that right. been this weekend? The fan, I got to tell you the truth. They had a couple of uh, uh, premieres. They did a couple of world premieres. One of them I didn't go to because it was a show that's only shown in Canada. They showed the uh, premiere, the pilot episode of Ghost It. It looks like it's going to be a fun show. Um, they showed the uh, uh, premiere episode of season two of The Travelers. I don't know if you've seen that. It's a great show. It's shot here in Canada, and it mainly, you know, it's uh, a lot of Canadian people or Canadian actors. I'm sorry. And um, as for Fan Expo itself, it's it's actually a lot of fun. It you can actually walk around on the floors. It's really nice being able to walk around the floors. Um, the rooms are segregated fairly nicely, so that. I didn't have problems getting into any room I wanted to get into. Didn't even have to wait in line, but I, I did because it was fun to talk to the other fans. Excellent stuff. Cool. Um, well, while you're um, talking as well, we've also been uh, just showing a couple of um, uh, screenshots there from uh, Aaron's phone because uh, he's actually lined up uh, an interview or two with us. So if you're, are you okay with uh, hanging with us or do you want to do a quick yes. no, 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 no. No, I'll hang around. I'll hang around. Let's go to Aaron. Thank you. Excellent stuff. Uh, so, right, let me uh, just uh, turn uh, his uh, Aaron's uh, mic on, hopefully, if we can. Uh, uh, this is where I desperately hope I haven't muted him and he has to unmute his phone. Uh, <laughs> so this is what yeah. Aaron, I think you may have to unmute your phone, sir, because the last thing I want to do is have total silence because we're with um, Stephen Frank, uh, who's uh, currently behind his booth. Aaron, if you could just unmute your phone, sir. And uh, Stephen, if people don't know, Stephen Frank has an impressive career. Um, can you hear me? In, we yes, can we indeed. Can. Sure. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are here at uh, we're at Dark Planet uh, Dark Planet Comics booth, and we're here with uh, Stefan Frank, uh, who we had on our podcast uh, recently. He's the author and creator of uh, the comic book Silver. So, uh, we'll uh, we'll let him tell you about it. Hey guys. <laughs> How are you? Nice. Uh, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Excellent stuff. Uh, just a quick introduction, because this is where a camera's been thrown in your face and a disembodied voice is now floating at you, so <laughs> I might as well introduce myself. Uh, my name's Lena Sultana. This is an Englishman in San Diego, which we, where we talk uh, Comic-Cons and comic conventions. So that's kind of the uh, perspective where we'll have the, our uh, conversation. But I'm also joined by Alyssa Franks uh, from the Friends of Comic-Con Forum, who's going to talk with you so uh thank you, thank you hi very very nice to meet you guys nice to meet you too I, you know in the the quasi you know air hugs kind of a way um <laughs> you've got it uh, you've got uh, it's amazing i was taking a look at your uh your bio and your background with um all of the illustration illustrated work you've done on movies and animated and now you're you're branching i mean you're an animator and a director and a writer um, yeah. you supervise, you supervisor for the Iron Giant. That was one of my all-time favorites. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that thank was gorgeous. You. Yeah, I mean, the Iron Giant... Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you, thank you. You yeah, know, the Iron Giant was definitely one of those, you know, like in a career, you have those landmark projects that you get to... Uh, uh, you're lucky enough to get connected with. And uh, this one was such a, a fun adventure. And... Uh, Everybody working on it, we had kind of the feeling that we were doing something just a little bit special. Uh, for me, I can tell you where that feeling came from is that, um, so my, my origin story, if you will, is that my parents were retailers. They had a store uh, in, on the outskirts of Paris in France uh, where, um, you know, they were selling books, comics, you know, uh, toys, cigarettes, a bunch of different things. And so I grew up, you know, loving comics and this you know and and drawing them and doing animation too uh, from as you know as long as i can remember and so i love the art form of animation uh and that kind of became my career but i you know like the, the movie that definitely made me want to do animation for sure as a career was heavy metal which i saw when i was a kid uh and so and then you know animation is great but very few projects um that you get to work on in feature animation, you don't feel like that at all. You know, it's it's completely in a different space. 
And so when I uh, when I met Brad and uh, uh, um, you know and I saw the you know the project and I was like, oh my god, that's exactly the kind of movie I want to work on in animation. You know, th something that just a movie I want to see that just happens to be animated without any of the tropes of uh, you know animation as a genre. You know, which does that make sense? Yes. Absolutely, and, and it, you succeeded. I, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. Not even in, not even all-time favorite animation movies. Just all-time yeah. favorite movies. Um, you've also done. Uh, what did you do for for Hotel Transylvania, two? Uh, so you were not directing a, that. No, no, no. I uh, I I didn't okay. really do anything on those. Um, so I was at Sony. Um, I, I was developing a movie at Sony. Um, uh, 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 and uh, um, so they were making Hotel T at the same time that I was there. So here and there, I helped them out, you know, on a sequence or two, or whatever. But I, I really can't take any credit for that whatsoever. It, it was just, I was, you know, like there was a couple of hands on decks, you know, moment, and I just uh, was one of the hands on deck. But uh, that, that's it. <laughs> and you wrote for Futuropol You wrote Futuropolis. Yes. So, so Future of Us is uh, is the feature uh, project that uh, uh, that I uh, uh, developed about ten years ago, uh, and uh, you know that I've developed at Sony and the uh, digital domain before that, and it's, it was one of those projects that was um, maybe a little too ambitious uh, for its time in terms of what animation was ready to digest, you know, at the time, uh, you know, and then there was. Uh, as many times with the projects, you know, the right situation became complicated and, and stuff like that. But there might actually be a future for Futuropolis. So maybe we'll talk about that, uh, you know, in the, in the near future. <laughs> that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Thank you. So you've come to, um, so you, do, you were doing comics at the same time that you were doing store, storyboarding? Or did you come to comics, come to, to um, Silver and comics later on? Yeah, so I um, so I only did comic. Uh, sorry, I only did animation for a long time. So basically, my until four or five years ago, my whole career was full time animation. Uh, and then um, at some point, it's a long story, but uh, the short version is that I got reconnected with comics, and uh, and very quickly that kind of took over my life, and you know, and and then I ended up with two full time jobs, you know, or three. <laughs> Because I'm still doing animation full time right now. I'm uh, I'm working on the Playmobil movie. You know the toys Playmobil. You know we're making a movie uh, um, based on that, and uh, it's a very very it's a very ambitious project. It's really fun. I can't of course talk about it at all, but other than tell you that it's a really really fun uh, take on it, um, and so I'm doing that full time. Uh, but I'm also doing the comics full time, uh, and uh, I'm also I made the choice when I got into comics to um, to also uh, create Dark Planet Comics, which is my mm -hmm. own publishing company, which was an extension of my regular company that I you know use for I've been using for years for the movie stuff, uh, and I really wanted to control the publishing and control the the speed at which things are going and and all, and all that stuff. So you know, so I have like those three jobs that I you know, uh, yeah, as somebody in animation, somebody who draws and writes comics, and a publisher. So it's a uh, it's kind of an intense adventure, but I'm really having a blast. Is it I was the, good. Is, oh, sorry, I'll just jump in quickly. Is it the first time that uh, Dark Planet has um, appeared at a convention? Is this your coming out party, or have you been to a couple? Before now, no, we, yeah, we've been doing conventions uh, for the last four years actually, and so uh, I, you know, I I really jumped into it. Uh, I just went, you know, to the deep end directly. You know, uh, we do about fifteen uh, fairly big conventions every year. So, like, I want to say in the last four years, we've done maybe 60, <laughs> 60 shows. <laughs> so I feel like I'm always on the road. You know, which is uh, which is really funny because in a previous life. My uh, other uh, my other full time job was musician, you know. But I, I didn't want to. I never wanted to tour or leave town, you know. But now I feel like with the comics, ironically, I'm always touring. So this is really strange, but fun. I was going to ask you about why you decided to um, start Dark Planet Comics as opposed to joining um, companies. Um, 
joining companies uh, like Image or joining one of the other distributing companies out there? Uh, there there's really two, uh, two reasons. The first one is that uh, coming from the, you know, the studio system, you know, in terms of the, the movie side, and being really, you know, used to working with large group of people, uh, uh, you know, executives, uh, uh, you know, and everything is an editorial project because those are huge projects, you know, a lot of money is at stake. So, you know, everything has to be planned very carefully and stuff like that. And, and so for, um, and I, you know, every, every idea has to be vetted by a million people, et cetera, et cetera. So when I got into comics, I really wanted to do all the things that sounded crazy. You know what I mean? That people like anybody's first reaction would be, are you freaking nuts? And, and you know, because I mean, every, every good idea always sounds nuts when you start, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, but then, then you look back and it sounds obvious. But so I, I really didn't, I just wanted to give myself the space to just do the crazy stuff that I knew everybody would say no to. And then afterwards, people go like, oh, hey, that's nice, you know. But so that's, that's one reason. The, the other reason is also because, uh, you know, big publishers have longer turnaround, you know, just in terms of their publishing schedule. You know, they're, they're publishing a lot of books. So, you know, they, they, you know, they get your book and they take your, you know, and it could be three years until the book comes out or whatever. And I really want it to be on an uh, accelerated schedule. Mm -hmm. So Dark Planet just lets me focus entirely, you know, on, on these books. I mean, in other words, these books are, you know, the sole focus of the company. And so uh, we can get them out as fast as we can make them. Mm. I love your use of, of black in, in the oh, silver you. comics. That's, I, you. you know, it's so, uh, it's so striking. Um, I've had an opportunity to take a look at it, at a few of, a few of them and, and um, just really appreciate the, the pen and ink, but I'm, I'm always a huge fan of, of that. Um, not, I, I don't like a lot of co color people, <laughs> people know that. Um, so you, you're on your third, uh, trade paperback. Uh, did you just right. put out your third trade paperback of silver? Uh, yes. So the, the third, we just did a, so what we do is, uh, every time that, uh, one of the books is ready for print, uh, we do a Kickstarter. So that lets people, uh, that gives people a chance to order it early. And it of course helps us since we're completely independent, uh, you know, to, uh, to manage the, uh, you know, the, the, the print runs, mm -hmm. which are getting bigger and bigger and all that stuff. So, um, so we just concluded the, the, um, the, you know, the, the, the Kickstarter for, uh, silver volume three and Rosalind, which is another book, which is a prequel to silver. Uh, and so uh, the the surveys are actually going out to all the backers uh, on the Tuesday morning. Tomorrow is, uh, um, <laughs> you know, it's Labor Day here in America. But, uh, um, so Tuesday morning, it's all going out. Wonderful. <laughs> so we, we have an announcement that we can make that uh, silver is actually yes. being shipped on, on Tuesday. <laughs> on Tuesday, first thing in the morning, <laughs> yes. As soon Wonderful. as people can answer their surveys, they're getting their books. <laughs> are you getting a lot of interest in footfall traffic in front of your booth yeah it's actually uh it, it's still early in the morning here on sunday morning so i feel like people are just coming in but I, as i'm looking down the aisle i see like a big crowd of people just uh, starting to fill the the aisles so that's nice that sounds wonderful um well thank you thank so you. much for joining us um is there anything else it's you'd like pleasure. to add where where can people find you so uh, I'm going to say for all things uh, Silver or Rosalind, which is the new a new book I'm very, very excited about. I actually uh, tell you in a couple of words what that is. Uh, so you know <laughs> Silver, if, for people who are not familiar, is a continuation of the original Bram Stoker Dracula uh, universe, right? And it takes place in the pulp era 40 years later. So we have a, a group of con men teaming up with a, a woman who's a vampire hunter to steal precious silver from a castle full of vampires. Right, so like as people do, uh, and um, and uh, but so and this woman, uh, the vampire hunter, Rosalind is her story as a child, and uh, I I think it's very interesting because it's a uh, it's it's not a straight comic. It's more like a graphic novel, like in like the old Eisner uh, graphic novels, Contract with God, that kind of feel where it's just like 
I images and words kind of, you know, uh, coming together, but not in the same sequential way that regular comics do. And it, it's the recollections of a child. And that, that's what's really fun with this is that all the, so it's a very pulp, uh, intense kind of noir adventure. But it's all seen as like the fleeting recollections of a kid and just seen through her eyes and her ability to process it at a young age. So it's, uh, it feels like a diary. Uh, it's like a completely, um, like a children's book about, uh, oh yeah, actually, <laughs> right, one, right there. Yes. Here yes. it is. I can show you actually. Ooh, that's, I forget we have video. <laughs> You know, so it's yes, this, it, it looks this, like this. this. Okay, this is going to be spot on for the audio version. But what we're seeing <laughs> is some incredible artwork. Oh, inside. yes. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, so it's a very special book that I'm very excited about. And uh, yeah, so uh, for all things silver and Rosalind or whatever, everybody can go to darkplanetcomics.com, and uh, then you'll see all the ways to get it. Excellent stuff. Wonderful. I mean, we've got a couple of people on the uh, the Q and A actually that are uh, fans already. Oh, great. Uh, super catchic. Uh, Silver is so great. I got in on the Kickstarter and can't wait to get Volume Three. So yeah, yeah, you. Oh, that is you, awesome. You, you have fans <laughs> ready for those books uh, coming out on Tuesday. I'm very excited. About, uh, thank you so much for supporting the Kickstarter because you know, as uh, as you know, we're completely uh, independent, and like literally, we could not do it. You know, we always say couldn't do it without you, but in this case, it's literally the <laughs> the, the backers make it happen. So it's really wonderful. Thank you Brilliant. so much, Stefan. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Have yourself the rest of a great show. Thank and, you so uh, much for having me. It's my pleasure. And thank uh, you. We also, yeah, we. Uh, I'm going to go and uh, check out the Hall H show uh, interview with you as well because uh, yeah. hear more and expand on this. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed for your time, sir. Thank you so much, guys. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. So there you go. That's um, Stefan Franek. Um, and uh, yeah, brilliant stuff. I mean, if you've got the chance to see on the screen there, some imp impressive artwork uh, for, for Silver. It's incredible. So that, was, that was stunning. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. I, I love his artwork. You know, I want I want a piece of his original art. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know um, Aaron is kind of wandering off. He's look at this. He's darting off like a madman. At this point. <laughs> I think I know. I think I know where he's going to head off next. So uh, tell you what, we'll wrap Michael. Up. Yeah, we'll go to Michael and just finish up with this because uh, obviously we're talking um, uh, uh, Fan Expo in Canada. So we started, <laughs> at which point we kind of got uh, sidetracked. What's the What's the weekend been like for you? Michael. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Hello. Yep. <laughs> okay. okay, I just wanted to make sure you guys can hear me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having all these notifications pop up here too, so it's a little bit of annoying. <laughs> all right. Um, the weekend's been really good. I'm at, I actually had to go here. I'm at a Starbucks because the reception in the in the place is just bad. It's really, really, really bad. And so I can send out, you know, messages or text messages, but getting anything else, you know, it's just hit or miss. Um, one thing I want to tell you real quick, I'm in a Starbucks now, so you can hear some music and people doing other things, but, but one of the things that I wanted to tell you, release of, um, of a VR, of, of, of a Expanse VR, in December, I had a chance, and, and listen, you may have seen this, uh, where the, you know when the stars came back to the set, they saw yeah. that the um, they used that VR. I got to try the VR. It was amazing. Okay, just totally, totally amazing. So it was it was great. Um, the guy who developed it is just oh my god, that kid is so smart. I I call him a kid. I mean, he's thirty, but you know, my 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 son could be thirty years old. Okay, let's leave it at that. Okay, um, but no, I mean these these. People are all just incredible. Now, going back to Fan Expo, the, the, there was one big issue. The only main issue I saw with Fan Expo was was the traffic control going between the, the north and the south building. Um, they had a couple of times where that just backed up like no one's business. It was not a good. It was not a good scene. But now, having said that, most of the other places were really a, easy to get to. They had separate lines for the VIPs. They had a VIP and premium lounge that were actually you know fairly nice. Um, there are a couple of things that you got, you know, as part of the premium package. I didn't get the VIP package. You know, they, they got the best deal. Um, it, all in all, I, I would say I, I like it. There's some things that are better than San Diego only because the Expanse panel 
was in a small room and they just let so many people ask questions and they were very good questions the um the uh, cast there was just incredible uh, I saw the two world premieres ghosted. Craig Robinson was there. He was fun. I saw the, the, the premiere of the second season of Travelers. The, you know, they were all there as a small room. Mm -hmm. The questions, how, the fan loved them, and they reacted so well to everyone. It was great. How was, Mike, Michael, how was the, um, the line management in general for the convention? That's kind of a gating factor for me. As a general rule, it was really very good. Like I said, I, okay. only, saw, I only saw, there were only a couple of places um, near the um, um, the escalators that bunched up, well, especially the the transit between the north and south building, that mm -hmm. that bunched up really badly. But that had more to do with just the logistics of the building. I mean, the way the 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 small number of escalators the building had, as opposed to them managing the lines. They did a very good job of managing the lines. So right, uh, I, good, good. I, so I, I, I just. Go on the ahead. floor, on the floor, were they managing the lines fairly well too? I I I, I missed that last part. You're gonna say on it the again. floor. Were they yeah, uh, on the sales it was floor? Easy. They were managing them too. Good. Oh, the the the, the floor was fine. Uh, it, the worst the floor was was on Saturday, and that was a Thursday or a preview night at Comic Con. It's it's nothing close. It's nothing not, nothing close to Comic Con <laughs> at all on there. <laughs> It's getting, it's getting very loud where you are, so I, yeah. I appreciate that it's, yeah. um, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a Starbucks thing, so I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. But tell yeah, what, yeah. in, in uh, 30 seconds or less, if you could sum up Fan Expo Canada then, I mean, plus, minus, yes, no? Plus, I mean, all right, let's take, it, let's take the expanse out of the equation because that's like way up here, okay, so we got to take that out of the equation. But uh, <laughs> when I come back again next year, Probably, but mainly because I would come back because you know that they've got the expanse here. As is it any different from the other cons? The answer would be no. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Excellent <laughs> stuff. Listen, thank you very much indeed for jumping in. I know it was kind of like a last minute thing, but thank you very much indeed for joining us, Michael. You're welcome. Thank Excellent you. Stuff. Enjoy the rest of your day, sir. You're welcome. Excellent. Oh, you're going to be doing, Michael. Before you go, you're going to be doing an article on your set view of um the expanse shortly yeah i've been I'm working on it right now kevin's taking a okay. look at it so yeah we'll be having that'll be out sooner than my other articles <laughs> okay <laughs> so in the next week or so we'll keep an eye out for it thank you mike yes yes have a nice day adios brilliant stuff so there you go that's fan expo uh, i did kind of want to also get into um what the uh the, the football's been like certainly over the course of, of the holiday weekend, but uh, we appreciate that uh, Michael's uh, had to uh, disappear. And also the fact that we've got a guest waiting with uh, Aaron. Aaron. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. You, oh, no worries. That's all right. Todd had to talk to some of his fans. So, uh... Which, uh, you know, he's got, he's got a fair share. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I will, uh, I will switch over right now. Uh, we're here with Todd Nock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we have a comic book pavilion, and, and uh, oh, your name was on the list. And oh, it's, it looks like he's getting, it looks like he's getting the big pitch. So, um, Todd, okay, what, 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 what kind of stuff does has Todd oh, done? Oh, this. I, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. Okay. Now, <laughs> now then, sir, how are you? Hello, I'm, I'm well. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. This is where um, you're looking at um, the slightly more attractive uh, Aaron, but um, yeah, a disembodied voice coming at you. So bear with, bear yes. with us on that. Uh, just to quickly introduce, uh, introduce myself, my name's Leonard, uh, and I run this podcast, which is a live show on YouTube, um, talking Comic Con and Con culture. So thank you very much Excellent. for joining us. Thank you. I'm happy um, to be here, Leonard. Thank you. Excellent stuff. Uh, well, obviously, it's um, a very, I mean, we've been, just, we spoke to uh, Martha. Uh, about the um, the actual convention itself and how it's gone, especially with the uh, the heat in California right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and also just the, the fact that it's the holiday weekend and all the other events going on. How's how's it been for you this weekend? 
Oh, we stayed really busy. Uh, yeah, my table's been hopping, and we've been having a good time. Yeah, the, it, the, the heat has been a factor, but not 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 as bad as like a like a Phoenix, Arizona con, where it's like in 117 degrees. But uh, but it is a little bit warmer than usual than we expect for uh, a Long Beach show. Usually, Long Beach Comic Con's held later in September, so the fact that we're earlier in September, I think, kind of dropped us in the middle of a of a Labor Day heat wave. <laughs> yeah, I've been told that it's um, I mean, the, the, the phrase on fire was uh, bounded around on social media. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's hot. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's a, I think there is a part of Los Angeles that is uh, dealing with some brush fires uh, over towards the Burbank area or something like that, I had heard. So there are yeah, actual I, I, fires <laughs> that have flared yeah, up. I, but nothing I, that's I, bothering us here in Long Beach. Yeah, I saw a picture of Burbank. It really did look like one of those uh, the shots from you know the Return of the King with Sauron just kind of hovering in the background and the the whole thing. Yes, we have people throwing their rings in there. It's not working. <laughs> it's not stopping it. Oh man. Um, so just to uh, quickly introduce uh, for everybody who, um, uh, if anyone doesn't know who Todd Nelk is, um, it's an incredible artist. I, I'm, I'm a massive fan of yours from uh, Young Justice. Oh. Days. Thank so, you. I uh, love doing Young Justice. Great, great book. Um, and obviously, you're um, known for your Spider-Man work. I mean, what's yes. what's been the kind of footfall when it comes to people in front of you? What what's the the books that have people been most interested in uh, kind of talking to you about? Um, well, I, most of the time, you know, uh, Young Justice always comes up because I did pretty much the entire run of that series. Yeah. So, uh, and there's a lot of it's a uh, a lot of people love that book and and grew up on that book. Um, but then the Spider-Man stuff, the Nightcrawler series I did with Chris Claremont, I did all 12 issues of that and loved doing that uh, series because I grew up a Chris Claremont fan. Uh, those were some of the first comics I read, his Uncanny X-Men. That's where I became a Nightcrawler fan myself. And then uh, and a lot of the current stuff I'm doing, which has been a lot of Spider-Man Deadpool stuff. Cool. When it came to uh, your con history, I mean, was it something that you came to as a professional or was it? Did, were you going to lots of conventions before you kind of really right. looked into it? Uh, let's see. I, I did attend conventions. Uh, let me say that again. I did attend conventions as a fan uh, when I uh, I grew up in the '80s, so late '80s, early '90s, around the time of uh, you know uh, Jim Lee, Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld uh, getting huge on X Men and Spider Man comics, and just pre uh, Image Comics launch days. I would I would go to the Dallas uh, comic book conventions. I'm a native Texan, so I, I did uh, those for about four or five years. And then uh, in 94, when uh, I was hired by Rob Liefeld, uh, I started attending the, the California conventions when I moved to work in his studio. I started attending those conventions as a professional. So I've done far more conventions as a professional over the past 20 years than I did in the, the five years I was able to attend the Dallas convens conventions a couple of times each year. So you've seen how the convention culture has just grown and developed and really kind of become a, a life force of its own. Which absolutely, is absolutely, yes. Is, uh, conventions, I, I believe, are quite a bit different now than they were uh, back then. Yeah, just I, well, just a touch. Even I've seen pictures where it's a, it's a whole different ball game. But um, certainly, when it yes. comes to um, co the modern convention culture, and for someone uh, in in art and in writing, I it's it's very interesting to see the conventions that um, people like yourself pick and choose, and you have to pick and choose between the various yes. events that uh, are going on. What what brings you, or what makes you choose a certain convention over another? Is it the relationship? with the area is it history I mean, what, 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 what makes yeah. you choose something you know i i think you're kind of hitting it on there with there there are a handful of different factors uh some are conventions that are just too big to miss out on san diego new york uh chicago seattle those are growing really fast some i'm really close with the promoters um so like uh phoenix comic con i've, I've known those people since they started as a little two-day show in tempe arizona um and people who put on the Long Beach show, Ontario, uh, so so that can be a factor as well. And then there's just which cons, you know, uh, invite me to be a guest and w will uh, want to bring me and my wife out so to to uh, appear there, you know. So uh, so we'll do conventions across the U.S. and across the world. We got to go to New Zealand for the first time to do uh, two conventions out there earlier this summer. So whenever we get to travel internationally, we are very thrilled to do that because uh, <laughs> it's great to see places we've never been. We were in London, actually. We were in London uh, Film and Comic Con last uh, July, and we stayed an extra week to explore London, and, it, and that was not enough time to, to see everything. So we can't wait to come back for another London Con. And you see, this is where I keep hearing about all the artists and all the international talents coming over for London Con and London events 
there's there's stuff outside the M25, man. Good grief. Anyway, that's that's <laughs> not, that's my bitch and bone. That's that's out of the way. Okay. Uh, I mean, when it when it comes to um, your conventions and throughout the course, I mean, that sounds like a, a pretty full calendar. There. I mean, how many weekends would you say that you dedicate to comic conventions? Uh, I anywhere from ten to fifteen a year. So I try not to book too many uh, because of work deadlines. Um, you know, you I'm not getting get my comics get, drawn. You never get stuff done. <laughs> exactly. If I can't get the books out, then what's the point of me coming to the convention? So it, it's a, it's an interesting juggling act to see which cons do I schedule, which ones do I have to turn down because of my work scheduling and cons I've already committed to. There was one time we had four cons in five weeks and one of those was mexico city and uh so we were only home for like three or four days in within those five weeks and uh it was it was crazy we, we learned then to really look at the calendar before we say yes <laughs> to a handful of cons i can imagine uh, what, yeah. what, what um, are you able to actually get any um, artwork done on the booth? I mean, is it com is it commissions that you do on or do, yes. you, do you get the chance to do any work? I, I do commissions at the convention. I don't bring the uh, comic book work here to the convention. It, it, it would just, it, it, there's just too many distractions. I wouldn't be able to give those panels the, 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 the focus and attention, the pages, the focus and attention that they need. So I work better on the interior and, and covers at home, but c uh, the convention commissions, those work great here at the table. Excellent stuff. And always a question that I love to ask artists and creatives at conventions, because I know that you are focused on your booth and you've got your fans that are coming to see you, but you've got to have the chance to have a wander around at some point. Have you managed to have a look around at this this weekend? Have you managed to catch up with anybody, any friends? Um, no, <laughs> I have not. We've been... <laughs> It's nice when we're that busy that we don't get to leave the table. Uh, but, you know, sometimes if I have to, you know, go to a panel, I'll try to take a quick scan as I walk through the halls. Like, what, what booths do I want to hit on the way back? Or where are my friends at so I can say a quick hi? Fortunately, uh, my friends are kind enough to stop by to say hi. As they're passing by, they see me at the table. They'll, they'll say a quick, uh, quick hi and a tap on the table as they, they uh, zip past. But uh, that's pretty much how we greet each other <laughs> at a con. If you, if you get 10 seconds to say hi, that's a pretty in-depth conversation in convention time. Well, that's what the hotel bar is for on the evening as well, of course. Exactly, uh, <laughs> yes. Where you get to shout a conversation for two hours and then be hoarse the next day. <laughs> Because of the cacophony inside that uh, crowded uh, bar ho or hotel bar area, oh, San Diego is the worst when it comes to shouting at a bar. Uh, uh, the Hilton, uh, the the Manchester Grand Hyatt, everyone meets there to talk at the bar, and it is just so so loud. <laughs> even shouting, it's like, did I hear that correctly? Did, what did I even say just now? It's just so. But it, you can't miss out on that. It's just part of the con culture and the way it, the way it goes. Yeah. Well, yeah. What what contract have I just verbally agreed to? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Excellent stuff. So um, then you get an email. At... So uh, no, it's okay. I thought I was uh, interrupting you. There. No, no, no. I, I was just I was just continuing the joke, but really, I should let that one go. <laughs> no, it's, I, I <laughs> got it. So cool. Um, so uh, obviously, you've got. Uh, I mean, we, we've been talking about this with Martha earlier about the fact that. Um, Certainly, in the last four or five years, your Sundays would usually traditionally be the quiet day, but no, Sundays really are as busy as the rest of them. So, uh, obviously, you've got the rest of your yeah. the, the rest of your convention to go. Um, so, what's on the uh, slate for you next? I mean, what's what books are you doing at the moment, and uh, what can we expect from you coming up? Yes, uh, let's see. I just finished drawing a two-part Spider-Man Deadpool uh, story written by Elliot Kalan. Um, issue 21 and 22. Issue 21 comes out this coming Wednesday, September 6th. Uh, issue two will be out in, or 22 will be out in October, part two. It's Spider-Man and Arcade, uh, Deadpool thrown into Arcade's murder world. Arcade has set up a murder world in Madripoor, and uh, Spider-Man and Deadpool are his first test subjects. And uh, so it's a really fun story. Elliot Kalan uh, wrote the Spider-Man and, and the X-Men series from a couple of years ago. And he was the head writer of The Daily Show, currently the head writer of Mystery Science Theater 3000, my personal favorite show. So uh, he wrote some really fun and crazy stuff for me to draw. So that's coming out as early as next week. And I also did a Thor one-shot called uh, Thor Where Walk the Frost Giants, which will be out in October. Wow. Excellent stuff. It sounds like you've uh, kept yourself nice and busy this year, then. Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Listen, uh, thank you very much indeed for your time and for, for talking to us today. I, I want to let you get off and uh, carry on meeting up with your fans. Uh, oh, Todd, thank you. Todd, thank you so much indeed for talking to us. 
Oh, my pleasure, Leonard. It's great getting to chat with you. Excellent. Where can people find you? Yeah, where's the best place? Oh, where can people oh, find me? Uh, well, you can watch me here on YouTube at youtube.com slash Todd Knock. I got a channel there, lots of art videos. Toddknock.com, uh, Instagram, Twitter at Todd Knock, and Art of Todd Knock Facebook page. And on Toddknock.com, I list all my convention appearances, so you can find me in Dallas and New York later this year. You keep yourself busy. Did I cover everything? <laughs> much, yeah. I mean, you, didn't, you didn't touch on the my, MySpace page, but we'll, leave, we'll let that slide just for a <laughs> I try to get my band back together. It's just uh, been really slow going. <laughs> Excellent. Todd, thank you very much indeed for your time, sir. Oh, my you. pleasure. All the best, Leonard. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Oh, man. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah, I've been a fan of his for a while. If you do check out um, the Young Justice books, go back in time and check those out. Excellent stuff indeed. So, yeah, thank you very much indeed to, to Aaron for uh, setting that up for us. Brilliant. That's wonderful. That was great. He's Excellent. A bundle. He is a bundle of energy. Isn't he just? Yeah. I, I don't know if you want to meet him for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, ju I just wish I could uh, throw up some of the artwork. It really is yeah. just, uh, well, we can certainly see it um, with the camera work that they're doing right now. And it, yeah. that's absolutely gorgeous. Love, love this work. Love his work. Cool. No, he was a bundle of energy. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did very well to keep <laughs> to keep up with him. <laughs> keep it up, yeah. <laughs> yes, good job. Good job, Leonard. Excellent. <laughs> Well, I, I know that um, Aaron, uh, this is where it is running off, because I think there's somebody else that they want to uh, uh, introduce us to, but we're, we're at an hour 10. Shall we keep we going? Are we okay? <laughs> I, I, you know, I think he was talking about the next stop, I believe, was he was going to be talking to a T-shirt company, um, which is called Tea No Evil. Um, and the gentleman, and I think we're, is... we're there, um, the gentleman's oh, name is okay. Franco T. Okay, um, is, is Aaron kind of like blitzing this entire convention in one I, go? Well, I, you know, I think he's, we're, we're just going to have to ride, ride this, ride the whole H train until it, it ends. <laughs> wow. okay, okay, we got, uh, we got Franco Tay, uh, the uh, creator of uh, all the shirts that you see here at Tino Evil. So I'm going to put you on with him. <laughs> That's, I love that I had an opportunity to, to take a look. <laughs> Franco, I had an opportunity to take a look at some of your shirts, and I have to say, the one you're wearing is absolutely one of my favorites. Love the Oh, Lucille. thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> absolutely, that was. Where do you? Um, who who is your artist? So the artist is me and my brother. So both of us come up with the concept and then um, the execution. And the, and the printing. Wonderful. <laughs> so do you print, you, you print all the shirts um, and just bring them to conventions or? Yeah. So um, what happens is that we have a print shop in Santa Ana and um, we, we print the shirts there. So each one is um, carefully, I guess, um, monitored because we, we care about quality and, and to see like um, that to make sure that people could wear it for a long time and it doesn't shrink or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. What? Uh, yeah. Do you worry at all about licensing? I mean, the Lucille is such a, a Walking Dead um, icon. Have you have you thought at all about? Uh, uh, has has they have they t contacted you at all? Um, they have not. So so oh, we good. haven't had problems with it because it's based off like mashups. Um, funny story about that is that my friend over here is wearing this shirt. Actually, over here, the, the Banksy one, the, the Daryl, um, uh -huh. Norman Reedus, the actor, actually bought two shirts of those. So and uh, so we've got a lot of support from the, the community. Um, so we, 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 we've been grateful for everyone's support. Cool. How long have you been making? Sorry, this uh, in, <laughs> another disembodied voice. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, no, I no. Um, so how long have you been making shirts now? Um, so this is our fourth year, which is crazy. So we started out in 2013. Um, we were funded through Kickstarter. Our goal was five grand, and we were able to raise about 7,500. Nice. So ever since then, yeah, we, we've been um, somewhat expanding um, thanks to our loyal supporters. And um, this year, we're gonna go to Walker Stalker and and see how 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 that goes. 
I, I mean, the one thing that a lot of people talk about when it comes to uh, uh, conventions and sort of T-shirt manufacturers, there does seem to be a, a, a lot of them. What What do you do to kind of uh, stand out when it comes to uh, the the amount of uh, people, the amount of displays, and amount of uh, manufacturers out there? What, in, so, terms of, in, terms um, of, in terms of your booth, perhaps. Right. I, I think we, we we pay attention to to the details for um all of our shirts so like for this one um you know like we have a slogan that says service with a smile which connects automatically to negan because he has that that grin and he kind of has the um he's somewhat um standoffish he's cocky so um it sure it, it matches somehow it connects right away with the with the property that we're trying to connect it with um it's kind of hard to i guess Telling details, but pretty much what it comes down to is the details that the other shirts don't have or other yeah. designs. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine it's just also a case of just grabbing as much of the uh, the, the passing footfall as you possibly can. Uh, I mean, what's what's um, how's uh, the con been for you this weekend? Especially, um, the especially con it's holiday weekend as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's been good for us. Um, I was really surprised about the people that have been donating to the Hurricane Harvey because we're do donating our pro proceeds to um, our ten percent of our proceeds to Hurricane Harvey, and people have been donating twenty bucks, ten bucks here and there. So, That's fantastic. We'll, so we've been really grateful. Yeah. Um, actually, in Long Beach, we have a, a loyal, strong support over here because we started out a Long Beach Zombie Walk about four years ago. And ever since then, people keep coming back, and we're we're, we're very humbled by that. That's fantastic. Alyssa, which yeah. is which is your best-selling shirt? Um, it's the Fab Four, which is my <laughs> what my um good friends wearing over here. Art. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, for this, oh, yeah, for this year, for some reason, it it's it's an anime one, and it's the Punch Club. <laughs> Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. How does how does the bastards ale shirt? Do you have that one for sale? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we have the bastards ale. Um, thanks for asking about that. That was our top seller online. Ah. Um, that moves a lot. We we probably reprint that every two weeks or so. So I think, <laughs> I think down the road we'll just reprint print a whole bunch of them at once. So it'll save us time. Aaron, I want one of those. <laughs> just <laughs> okay. Okay. No, no. I'll let him know. <laughs> no, she she, no, she said she wants one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, where sorry, are you guys from? I'm sorry. Where are you guys from? I I'm from New England, and Leonard, my co-host, is from um, England. Uh, York. <laughs> I'm from I'm from Old England. She's from yes. New England. Oh, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> So are you guys in the same office or different? Uh, different. different. So definitely, definitely different. Different, <laughs> different locations. Okay. That's yeah, pretty absolutely. cool with um, internet technology, huh? Yeah. Yes. I mean, do you, yeah. do you, um, do you mail uh, internationally? We do. We do. Um, a lot of our buyers are from, from the UK. And um, it surprises us because sh shipping over there is pretty expensive. But yeah, people still buy it. Well, you see, we and like our we like our good quality mashup shirts. This is the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is what we do. Excellent is, stuff. Is your background in art, Franco? Um, it is not. My my background is in um business, uh -huh. and my brother's background is in art. But I've always been a fan of art. I've always read comics here and there. But um, I don't that's know. Just, I yeah. I think just, I, I I was self taught in a way. That sounds great. Yeah, that you and your brother can uh, combine the two, the art and the business, and do something that you both really enjoy together. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Actually, my brother right now is in a different event. Um, six two six night market. Um, we we've come to the point where we have to split up and do different events because mm -hmm. a lot of these events end up on the same weekends or same days. But <laughs> but we're fortunate that we've we've, we've been growing all this time. That's wonderful. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're getting a lot of traffic this weekend too. Thank yeah, you so yeah. Much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for your time. It's an honor. Absolutely. Brilliant. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Where can people thanks, find guys. you? Have a good one. Before we go. Um, before you you guys can find us on um, tinoevil.com. 
And also on um, Instagram under T No Evil. That's T E E um, hyphen. I uh, know that's yeah. So no um, yeah. So it's just all one word. Uh, T E E N O Evil. So kind of like see no evil, but re re replace <laughs> it with a T. Perfect. Thank you so much, Franco. Cool. We'll, all, we'll yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. We'll stick all the links in our uh, show notes as well, and we'll uh, we'll we'll certainly spread the word. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks for your support, guys. Talk to you guys Thank soon. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, Franco T from T Tino Evil, um, oh. and uh, we'll certainly try our best to uh, Sorry. put the uh, the links up on the uh, the screens uh, a little bit later. Those T-shirts, so I just are really are. fun. I love the detail yeah. in them, and just kind of that. that what, what size do you wear? What size do you wear, Lisa? <laughs> Shall I announce it? <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm just going to say that question. I really want to ask. <laughs> a lady. Well, you've, been SD, you've been SDCC fit, right? Yes. I, you know, large, I guess. Medium. Medium. Large. Medium. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it, Put it on the spot, man. <laughs> yes, you have. I, I am blushing now. Yes, you can see how easy it is to make a list of blush. <laughs> Oh, my word. Listen, um, I know that um, you did have somebody else that you wanted to line up in terms of the Planetary Society, but we are kind of running out of time. So tell you what, if we can just switch the camera around and uh, see you for a second, Aaron. You want to see my ugly mug? Uh, oh, shush. <laughs> oh, gosh. oh, there you are. Excellent stuff. So listen, let's uh, do a bit of a wrap up then, because it really does look like it's been an incredible event i mean what what has, what have you been able to see uh, this weekend which is kind of stood out in your mind well uh, we had todd knock uh, earlier today and i attended his panel yesterday with the uh, his fellow uh, cohorts from extreme studios it was their 25 year anniversary panel so you had matt hawkins in there uh, shannon shannon denton um and uh yeah, and Norm, and Norm Ratman. So that was a pretty fun panel. They're always a hoot when they're together. Um, and yesterday also we had, um, uh, I attended another panel that sort of showcased, uh, you know, being, being Filipino myself, it was, it was nice to see a panel that uh, showcased some of the Filipino American talent that's out there. Um, of course, we had uh, Wills Portacio there. We had uh, Van uh, Parible. Um, he, he's the um, creator of Johnny Bravo, which I didn't know about. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so, um, yeah, and yesterday we just, of course, as we always do, we go up and down Artist Alley trying to meet as many artists as possible. So that's been pretty much our <laughs> Long Beach uh, convention. Um, and trying to stay away from the heat, as people have been saying. <laughs> so that is, that is a good follow-up question. How has the AC been at the convention center? Um, it's been here and there. Um, some some parts seem to be a little bit uh, cooler than others and, and warmer than others. Um, but it's keeping up. Yeah, it's it's sort of keeping up. It's it's it is a little bit stuffy in here, to be honest with you. Okay, because <laughs> that's that seems to be one of the big the big problems at conventions. <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of room in the aisles behind you. There uh, is, uh, yeah. As you, as you can see, there's uh. Well, what, yeah. what, what, time, what time is it over there at the moment? Just. Is it just it is. There? It's it's about eleven twenty-two. Okay, so yeah, the day is just getting ramped up at this point, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. What what's uh, in terms of attractions? What's um on on the docket at the moment for today? I mean, is there any panels? Anything that's kind of uh, uh, certainly a, uh, a, head, a headliner that's um uh, springs to mind? Well, um, <laughs> I I mentioned Todd Knock earlier. He has a a, a Deadpool panel that he's doing with Scott Koblish later today. So I told I said I'd, I'd stop by there uh, when we left Todd uh, earlier, uh, uh, you know, a few minutes ago. So I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, Todd's always fun at any panel. So if you're at a convention and Todd Malk has a panel, make sure you go because he's hilarious. Um, you know, <laughs> even just, if you don't just, like comics, he's he's entertaining. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. Um, and there's a um, I think there's an animation panel I want to. Uh, sort of check out later and um, a guest that we had uh, on a podcast uh, David Popose he is the uh, writer and creator of uh, Spencer and Locke he's gonna be a part of a panel at I believe uh, noon uh, it's gonna be about uh, sort of creating your first comic book so um, I'm gonna try and nice. you know check that one out 
Cool. Nice. Well, in that case, you're probably going to head off to that right now, so we won't distract you any further. We'll let you get off. Listen, thank you so much indeed for setting up this well, uh, today. Yeah, so thanks for fun. having me. Yes. Uh, this, uh, you just left that wonderful tease. So are you thinking about your own comic book? <laughs> me? <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm always thinking about yeah, I mean, um, I'm not an I'm not a, an illustrator. Um, I'm more of a I guess a writer. Um, or I haven't really written anything, but I do have a lot of ideas in my head. So yeah. I, I do a, I, I do I do tend to attend a lot of writing panels when I'm at a convention. Um, uh -huh. I enjoy going to Marv Wolfman's panels. His panels are pretty cool. So uh, Brandon Easton, he uh, he's done some work for Stranger Comics. Uh, he's doing some work for IDW. He has a lot of cool writing panels as well. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, 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 I just thought that might have been, you know, a hint of, of what your next project <laughs> is, since you do so much. I mean, right. I, you brought us four, uh, four interviews today, and we really appreciate all of the people from a wide variety. Martha was great, um, mm -hmm. and certainly the two creators, and just throwing the t-shirt guy in it at the end was really fun. I wish we could have gotten to the last person. Um, that would have oh, been yeah. fun just as a wrap-up, uh, but unfortunately, the time is uh, just away from us. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, I, I guess the, the, the last person I, I sort of wanted to go to was uh, a volunteer from the uh, Planetary Society because uh, a growing trend at conventions that I've noticed anyway is the uh, growing presence of you know, NASA type uh, exhibitors. Mm -hmm. So uh, the intersection of like, uh, you know, science and science fiction is, is, is pretty interesting, uh, which we saw pretty evident uh, earlier this year at uh, San Jose, uh, uh, Silicon Valley Comic Con, which was pretty uh -huh. interesting. Uh, it's run by uh, Steve Wozniak, one of the founders of Apple Computers. So yep. Yeah, New, York, and, and New York's doing a very similar kind of thing as well. They're kind of heading towards hard science. And, uh, and bringing, oh. yeah, bringing in the different areas. Um, the, Martha had mentioned a couple of different areas that they've got going, and the um, and New York is also doing a podcast area, and you mm -hmm. know, just bringing in all of the different components of pop culture in one place, I think, is brilliant. And you did a very uh, nice yeah, job so. in yeah. giving us an overview of it today. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Brilliant. So you and don't, so, forget, Aaron, don't stay SDCC fit. Quick segue then. Where can people find you and where can people follow SEC Fit? What, where can people find you, Aaron? Uh, well, I have my own personal uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook page. Uh, it's Aaron Naboos, uh, my full name. Uh, and then, uh, of course, um, at HallH.com. Our, uh, our social media accounts are uh, it's Hall H D O T C O M. And of course, as the listener knows, uh, we have uh, uh, SDCC Fit uh, on all you know Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook as well. So just follow the hashtag SDCC Fit, and also Hall H Show, which is uh, my podcast. Excellent stuff. Listen, thank you very much indeed, man. Take care and enjoy the rest of the show. Peace, thank cheers, you, and uh, thanks again for having me. Yeah, I'll see yeah. you later. Bye Take bye. Care. Bye bye. Yeah, so if you do want to follow him, especially on Instagram as well, especially when it comes to seeing him um, looking hot and sweaty and generally way more <laughs> fit than you ever will be, uh, yeah, you can, you can just uh, follow him for that, so that's, that's great. Right then, so let's um, do a quick wrap-up of the rest of the show. Thank you very much indeed to all of our guests, uh, but uh, let's do a quick uh, week in TV. Alyssa, if you want to uh, quickly run through that. Um, certainly. Uh, we can do the week in TV. It's it's pretty short this week. We've got um, ABC and CBS are go both going to be doing some specials that they're airing um, for their fall offerings. Um, you know, the pretty generic, uh, you know, this is what we're going to be doing. Um, we do have the American Horror Story cult is coming back this week. Um, it's taking it. The first show happens the night of the presidential election. So we can guess where well, yeah. where this is going. And and it, it, apparently it will take place in the universe that it's that American Horror Story has taken place in in the past. I'm not very familiar with the show, but it sounds like I, I may tune in for this one just because I'm, I'm curious about I'm, yeah, I'm curious about the show if anything because yeah. the trailers it looks like the purge. Um, I'm just wondering where they're going with the storyline. Um, so no, I'm I'm curious about that as well. So 
Okay. The, the brief, briefly, I mean, what I've heard, and I'm not sure how much to take this, is that um, it's a, about a lot of the discomfort and horror that people feel um, under the new president. Yeah. Um, so when you talk about purge, you think about immigration. Um, so it should, it could be, it could be very interesting. Um, what I have heard is that apparently it's the story is going to be from both sides. So I am appreciative of having a, a rounded view um, because I believe in the middle and the middle ground. There's the truth is in the middle. Um, History Channel is airing an interesting show called The Dark Files. It explores the abandoned military facility on Long Island, uh, which is rumored to have housed mind control experiments in the 50s. So, you know, another conspiracy thing. But if you like that one, that that's, should be on your list, um, The Dark Files. Um, and Sci-Fi Channel is doing um, a network premiere of the Con Man series. They're going to put them all together and air them back to back um, on Saturday. So if you haven't um, seen them, uh, now is a good time. I'm going to I'm going yeah. to record it. Well, so. it's I mean this this is something which we're going to be doing a, an episode on in a couple of weeks time uh, about uh, Comic Con HQ and about um, how that uh, project has um, uh, developed and how it, uh, it obviously was uh, instrumental in getting season two of Con Man up and running. But now it looks like um, shows seem to be abandoning uh, the, the platform. So we'll be doing a thing on uh, Comic-Con HQ in the next couple of weeks. But, uh, yeah. Interesting. So there we go. Okay. Um, finales? Um, finales, finales this week are Twin Peaks, which... Um, uh, it seems like it's gotten a, some pretty good traction. Uh, Power Shooter Loaded, which I caught an episode of and is is fun. If you haven't caught Loaded, um, it's about this group of, of uh, coders who get money, who sell their, their, their thing uh, from Britain. I think it's on BBCA. And they get money and they, they buy some stupid stuff and they, they're pretty quirky and it's funny. Um, Snowfall, uh, my favorite blood drive, uh, my favorite will is ending this week as is blood drive. And so we're going to be publishing, um, we're going to be publishing our new, uh, September shows, uh, highlights article, um, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. And now you have uh, a yeah, preview. Okay. Indeed. Well, let's do a very <laughs> quick, uh, quick review because obviously the the this week's episode has gone away from us. Uh, we want to try and keep it around uh, an hour. Uh, so we've now gone to an hour and a half. So let's just make it real quick to, to the extent where I've set my timer up for three minutes. So here we go. I'm going to hit start. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk, let's talk about Inhumans, which I went to on Friday at Sheffield Cineworld. We saw it in IMAX. It's one of uh, two laser projections, um, uh, projections of IMAX format in the UK. You've got London and you've got Sheffield, which means it's very much the optimal uh, chance to see a presentation in the best way it possibly can. And it was utterly wasted on this show. Why on earth it was done in IMAX? It completely baffles the hell out of me. There was maybe two or three shots in which the actual format itself was explored and demonstrated at its best potential. And that seems to be the show generally. Um, unfortunately, uh, where in the past where we have had shows like Agent Carter and where we've had um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the reason why those shows have um, developed from rocky starts is because the people behind the show uh, the showrunners, the writers, they have a real investment in having this thing be a success and they have something they want to say. It really does feel, and from it, the extrapolating from the interviews that we've seen so far with the showrunners like Jeff Loeb, that it seems like it's come down from on high that we need to make an in, uh, inhuman show. And then it's just been handed off to people that really couldn't care less um there's no real heart to the whole thing the whole thing is very disjointed um it's not the actor's fault um in terms of the performances and the people playing the characters 
they are doing the best they can with the um, the, the the material that they're provided, which unfortunately is just so weak source. Um, the storyline is about uh, the Inhumans, um, which have uh, their city of Atalan up on the moon, and how they are uh, tempted to, or they're forced to come to Earth. Uh, through a, uh, a kind of military coup uh, from inside of the royal family. It's such a shame that so much potential in terms of the story, in terms of class society, about um, the way that we interact with people we're not familiar with. So much potential was there, and it's just been squandered by people who couldn't care less. Listening to the actual show itself, um, it really does feel like there's dialogue where um, it's just placeholder and it's almost like they forgot to get to the actual writing of the show and making a, a show with some heart and some spirit. It's a show which has unfortunately started on such weak foundations and I can't quite see where it's going to go from here. I can only hope that it can survive this very poor beginning and I can certainly say there's my alarm. There you go. That's my three minutes. <laughs> Stop right there. So there you go. All I can say is just to wrap uh, my review up, I only hope it can only get better. It can't get any worse. So there you go. And, oh, and if you, are, if you are tempted to go and see it in IMAX, don't even bother. Watch it on telly. There's just no real point in seeing it in IMAX. So there you go. I, I That's my three-minute review of Inhumans. I will be catching it in on IMAX, um, not on IMAX, but on uh, on the television when it comes out. Um, it's unfortunate that the Inhumans don't ever really seem to get the buy-in. You know, the the comics didn't really because it is such a, a grand concept yeah. um, that we you know when it came out in the in the sixties and seventies. And, it, and it's, 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 it joins New Gods as being something that doesn't quite connect um and right. I, I just don't get why because maybe, there is so much stuff that it could talk about and it just they just don't seem to maybe connect. it doesn't i mean i'm not really sure and i haven't visited re the inhumans in a while but it doesn't does it have that every man that that one person one character in the cast that you could identify with that everybody can identify with um there is an every man kind of character or a human character um, but unfortunately, he is part of the royal family, and he's an asshole. Um, so <laughs> it, does, it doesn't really – how you're supposed to connect with any of them is very difficult. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but there okay. we go. Right, so, so that's, my, that's our thoughts on Inhumans. Do let us know what your thoughts are. Do let us um, know on Twitter or uh, in the comments below if you have any thoughts on um, Inhumans. And, of course, uh, do keep a, a abreast of what we get up to ourselves. Alyssa, where can people find you online? People can find me at Friends of CCI is my Twitter and friendsofcc.com is my website. Excellent stuff. For myself, you can find me on social medias at Englishman SDCC, and of course, keep up to date with all the bits and pieces we're doing on uh, Englishman in uh, an Englishman in San Diego .com. And of course, uh, if you would like to uh, keep us a, a, abreast of anything that you think that we should be covering on the Hangout and also on the website as well, do send an email to tips at an Englishman in San Diego .com. And of course, if you would like to support the Hangout, please do patreon.com slash Englishman SDCC. So go See on, you Alyssa. Next week. Oh, See you next week. Is that, is that what you're going to do? Are you going to remind me of something that I was going to do? Yes. <laughs> totally. okay. I, was, I was reminding you of Patreon. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Okay. Listen, we need um, support. We want to get Leonard to New York Comic Con. That's that's the goal is to get a letter to New York Comic Con. I need somebody to hang out with. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm, I'm down with that. Um, next weekend, very quickly, um, I am going to be at um, ICE in Birmingham. I'm going to be interviewing John Tyler Christopher. Uh, do subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, because uh, I will be doing a live stream of that interview on the Saturday. Uh, so if you would like to see uh, my little uh, chat with uh, Marvel uh, artist, and cover artist, uh, John Tyler Christopher. That's going to be happening next Saturday. Do take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll let you get off because it's Labour weekend and you've got stuff to do. Uh, so uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. From us to you, we'll say goodbye. Bye-bye.